Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very, very exciting new show, The Galactic Show, over on Mason Jupiter. And I'm so excited to have you all here today. Thank you very much for joining me. I can see a lot of our soul family in the chat. And yeah, the girls and I really appreciate all of the likes, shares, and subscribes. As um, Julie said in one of the last uh, astrology shows, you know, we do quite often forget to uh, please ask you guys to like, share, and subscribe, which helps these, you know, episodes to come out. It helps us to be seen and to keep doing what it is that we love. So yeah, I can see a lot of soul family in here as well. And I just want to thank you all and show my appreciation. So this topic has been a little bit in the news lately, or well, not in the mainstream news. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a really exciting topic to dive into today. But before we get started, I want to remind you guys that we have the full moon eclipse activation coming up. So you'll see here Julie and Elena, and this will be happening on the 25th. So I do recommend to jump on over and register for that. It's going to be a really powerful activation. Um, so much of my readings at the moment are focused on getting things in order and getting things into alignment for this particular timeline. So yeah, make sure to register register for that. And you can also see every now and then there's a little 20% discount popping up there for uh, bookings with me. So we have, if you use the uh, code word Equinox in all caps, you'll receive 20% off, but that is only till the 4th of the 4th, the portal day. So easy way to remember, but it is on my starseed readings where we look into your origins. I really tune in to see like where you've had different lifetimes, where you're still connected to. And in some cases, even in a hybrid sense, where you still have like DNA connections and where special gifts and talents and abilities may be connected and come from, how we can enhance and further tap you into these abilities and how this can assist you in your soul mission here on earth. My other favorite reading that I love doing is the oracle readings, the mystic oracle reading. So yeah, that is a fun one. If you've got a lot of questions you want to get through, if you want to also talk about some of your ET contact experiences or look into some psychic or supernatural experiences that you might have had, I find this is a really great session to also look into. So without further ado, let's get in and have a look at the plasma beings. So for me, you know, plasma beings I have had, and thank you so much for your beautiful comments. Love you guys. Um, but yeah, for me with the plasma beings and things, and bear with me as I navigate, because there's a lot to do. Um, so I first want to start with, I've got a few examples of plasma beings that I've uh, interacted with and experienced in terms of like ET UFO side of things. There's various different topics to cover when we're talking about plasma. So it is one of the fourth states of matter. And I have done shows on this where we talk about like linking it to water. Um, so let me just bring up this screen. So yeah, we will talk about like plasma being one of the fourth states of matter as well. Um, so when we look into the body, and I want to talk about it first in us. So if we look into the physical body and we look into the aura, we have this beautiful bioelectric field. So that's what you see when I present my different aura drawings that I do. And when we look into this and how this part of us interacts in quantum entanglement, in the universe as well. We can see with Curlian photography, which is also detecting the plasma field that is around us uh, when people have aura photos and things. So when we look into us as a human, we have plasma exuding off of us. And you also see this within like various different uh, fruits and vegetables and different objects, you know, everything, even down to crystals, or if we're looking into a little Lakshmi statue that I've got, all of these things exude plas uh, plasma. It's just about charging or putting them on a charging plate with an electrical current going through and using a special photography technique to actually help to see, um, you know, some of the plasma. So I'm just going to bring up my screen share and we'll go through one by one. And I might actually start with this. So... Um, you guys can read along with me, but we can see here we've got a plasma tesla bowl, we've got the lightning. So um, from the Greek or ancient Greek, 
plasma means a moldable substance. So it's one of the four fundamental states of matter, the other three being a solid, a liquid, and a gas. So it's characterized by the presence of significant portion of charged particles in any combination of ions or electrons. So it is most abundant form is in ordinary matter in the universe. So mostly in the stars, including the sun but also dominating the refined interclustular medium, intergalactic medium, plasma can be artificially generated, for example, by heating a neutral gas or subjecting it to strong electromagnetic field. So we see also, um, you know, even in the beauty industry, the plasma technology used in the devices called iontophoresis. So this can help to push different things further in on a cellular level. So it can help to push hydration further into the skin. We can also see plasma being used in Rife machine technology to help put frequency into the vibration or into our uh, physical body and aura to cancel out or to even attack parasites and totally turn them inside out. Really, really cool. Something I might share a little bit more on the health benefits inside of working with plasma and Rife frequencies and technologies in further shows but I also just want to talk to you about this as well so depending on the temperature and density a certain number of neutral particles may also be present so in which case plasma is called partially ionized so neon signs and lightning are examples of partially ionized plasmas so unlike the phase transitions between other three states of matter the transition of plasma to plasma it's not as well defined and the matter of interpretation and context so whether given degree or ionization suffices to call the substance plasma depends on specific phenomenon being considered so we can see here there's a lot more information on this going more into the physics and the science of it so if you're a bit of a geek like me um, head on over to wikipedia or to google to find out some more definitions around plasma so we have, um, oh, and I see Vicky talking about Andara. I do have the beautiful Andara on that you gave me gorgeous. I thought that, that would be a beautiful one to wear for my first galactic show. So thank you for sending that through to me. So I first became aware of more, I guess, like um, this article through, I think it was Leak Project. Um, Rex Bear did a great episode talking more in depth about this. We will go through this a little bit quickly. Um, but yeah, NASA has also uh, put their information forth, which we'll read in here. So we might jump in more to the abstract, but this is extraterrestrial life in the thermosphere. So plasma UAPs, which we used to know as UFOs, still more commonly referred to as UFOs, unidentified aerial phenomena. Um, so pre-life fourth state of matter. So just to get a little bit of a bit of a background in the science too, there was someone who, or a few people that have released um, balloons that have electrodes. So you know how you have those little devices, I forget what they're called, where you measure electrical currents, whether you're checking a battery or you're checking some other kind of device. Anyway, they put an electrical current um, device and a little clip on a balloon. And what they noticed was that as the balloon went further and further up into the thermosphere and into our atmosphere, the charge of it went up. And I think this was maybe about 50 meters, something that kind of uh, distance. But what they noticed is further down closer to the earth realm, there was less of an electrical charge. Now we know we have electrical charge too here in, um, you know, in the earth, in the ground, this is where we can receive antioxidants and be impulsed with the Schumann frequency and things. But what I'm about to talk to you and why I'm sort of explaining a bit of the science is these plasmoids or plasma beings have been detected high up in our thermosphere. So some of them, you'll let me just read this and it will describe it a bit more. So you can see here all of the people that contributed to this. So it says here plasmas up to a, a kilometer in size have behaving similarly to multicellular organisms having been filmed on 10 separate NASA space shuttle missions over 20 miles above the earth within the thermosphere. So these are self-eluding plasmas, which are, or self-illuminating plasmas, which are attracted to and may feed off electromagnetic radiation. So they have different mor morphologies, cone-shaped, cloud-shaped, donut, spherical, cylindrical. Um, and these are some of the UFO type shapes too, or what we call here and in Italy, um, 
uh, Ibani, which is like a biological entity, some looking like jellyfish. Um, there's some really, really interesting ones if you type Ibani. I did cover the topic of Ibanis on um, some of my uh, previous shows and things too. Um, and you'll see Ibanis on my YouTube channel that I filmed. I think there was one on there that I put up. Uh, but yeah, so they've been filmed flying towards and descending from uh, from the thermosphere into thunderstorms, congregating by hundreds in interacting with satellites, generating electromagnetic activity, approaching the space shuttles, computerized analysis of the flight path trajectories document that these plasmas travel at different velocity, uh, velocities from different directions and change their angle of trajectory, making 45, 90 degree and 180 shifts. So they follow each other. They have been filmed accelerating, slowing down, stopping, congregating, engaging in hunter predatory behavior and inter intersecting plasmas leaving in plasma dust in the trail of their wake similar to lifelike behaviors that have been demonstrated by plasmas creating experimentally plasmas which or plasmas which may have been photographed in the 1940s uh, by the World War II pilots identified as Foo Fighters. So a lot of you um, that are into the ET UFO subject would have seen um, this, this topic talked about, uh, where they talk about Foo Fighters being spotted by the pilots. So heaps of information online if you guys want to look that out. I have actually seen one night on the beach watching two plasma ships at nighttime actually kind of like race each other. So as you would have like a drag race, you know, with cars on earth, I've seen plasma ships actually race each other and one kind of like overtake. Um, they do seem to interact with our feeling and emotion with some of the UFOs and crafts and even some of the beings. Um, and I have seen plasma portals also open up too. So there is a really interact, uh, there is an interaction and an interest in humans that they seem to have too. So this has been repeatedly observed in the 1940s. Um, so filmed by astronauts, military pilots, classified as unidentified aerial anomalous phenomena. So plasmids are not biological, but may present as a form of pre-life via the incorporation of elements common in space could result in the synthesis of RNA incorporation or plasma constitute fourth state of matter and attracted to electromagnetic activity and when observed, uh, in the lower atmosphere, likely account for many of the UAP or UFO sightings over countries. So this could be, in fact, what I'm actually filming or have filmed in the past. So yeah, there's a lot more to read on this. This was on ResearchGate. So if you guys want to type in plasma and then type in ResearchGate, you should be able to find it or plasma beings um, or even type in thermosphere and you might have a bit of luck with that. But you can see here, this page I think was quite long. I'm not sure if it was like 100 pages or something like that. But yeah, you can see a lot of photos in here too. I did actually attempt to print it out. And then when I realized how much ink it was taking, I let go of that. So let me just catch up with this. You can see here some examples and it is a little bit fuzzy, but here's one of the donoid, uh, donoid, donut shape. We're in the shadow period of Mercury retrograde, guys, so bear with me. But we can see here some of the donut ones. Um, and whilst these are kind of like fuzzy and things like that, oh, also some of the beings were said to be up to, I think it was 90 feet when um, NASA was having some of the sightings. And they did have, they have like an electromagnetic protection that they put around some of the spacecrafts. And when they turn off some of these things, they notice that these beings, um, these giant beings seem to feed off electromagnetic energy too. So that was something that really captured my interest, that made me want to talk about the topic. We can see here they look almost a little bit like base life forms. Um, and when we look into this as well, you know, if we talk about the waters above or the topic as above, so below, um, this is really interesting if this was kind of almost like looking at the waters above and some kind of other life form that we haven't actually really kind of identified as much. But I'm sure there's much more information that they haven't released to the public on this topic. Um, oh, and thank you guys for the beautiful comments and to um, our admin or uh, uh, people that are helping in this chat. We really appreciate your help as well. 
So let me just see. Oh, thank you, Tim. Yeah, really appreciate you guys hitting the like. And I will just check in with what else I've written. This was another interesting one. So when we look to the old days of um, theosophy and even um, the Theosophical Society, they had a huge interest in talking about um, ectoplasm with a lot of psychic mediums. So what you see here is actually kind of like a plasma bubble that's been generated by the mediums. So different mediums work with different things. Some contact loved ones that are passed, and that's what you see in the face in this. So this form of plasma is called ectoplasm. So we see this with people like Sai Baba producing like what's known as vibhuti, which is like an ash or a dust. And you can also see sometimes that it will literally fall out of the skin. So a lot of these mediums would actually produce it. It would come out their nose, out their eyes, out their skin. Um, it doesn't look like the most pleasant psychic medium experience to go through. Um, but you can see here, there's various different photos. And yeah, it was really popular back in the day to have more kind of like these kind of presentations. So you can see it almost creates a knowing that there's an electromagnetic component to plasma and they're able to produce or have like the loved ones come through almost like a photo with in this. So it does kind of look photoshopped, but according to old accounts, um, some of these are not. So really, really interesting. We can see here, this one actually looks kind of similar to where we talk about orbs. And you guys have even caught some of the orbs. You know, when I'm filming these shows, they like to be around, you know, high energy, high frequency. So please point out or comment below if we do have any orbs show up today. So I'm just going to come back here for a moment too, because I will have to switch something over. Um, yeah, as Tim says, scary, but fascinating. And Laura... <laughs> Um, Ghostbuster ectoplasm. Yeah, it's a real thing. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, we do tend to have orbs, fairies, other things showing up around here. I do live quite close to the hills, um, which is just, you know, we're in such a veil between worlds type area too, that we're really, really lucky. And I'm just reading some of your gorgeous comments as well. So um, yeah, Stella's also saying that um, it was shaped like a tic tac or an oval. So some of these ones are spherical, some are cylinder, some are cone shape. Um, I I've seen plasma ships that are also kind of bell shape or spinning top type shape too. Um, let's just see. All right, so I want to stop this for a second because I'm going to have to click on to another thing. So yeah, don't don't forget to hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons. We love it when you guys do that, and also sharing this to anyone else that you know that is interested in this kind of a topic, because at a I really sort of try and cover the different aspects, not just sort of like the NASA side of things. So what I'm going to share with you now is um, this is some things that I came across when I was researching the sub uh, subject a little bit deeper. And let me just see. I'm going to show you a clip that was actually on TikTok, but it's angels that were filmed in the sky. And recently I popped up on Facebook as well, um, an experience that I had just before waking, which was um, seeing angels descending. But to me, it seemed like a Project Blue Book type thing, um, Project Blue Book. Um, but yeah, there was a whole heap of other strange things in that dream. So with this, though, it does look like it is more of a plasma thing, not necessarily like a, you know, Project Bluebeam type situation. So I'm just going to... And here we go. Okay. Looks like we've got the screen share working and... Yeah. yeah they look like angels. Yeah. Yeah. Especially those two right there. Yeah. I think this is a sign. It stops right there. That's weird. Look at that. Yep. Does look like angels. That angel looks like it's going to hit that one. That was moving down, and the other two are looking at it. It's messed up. I 
I want to keep video okay. the same Yeah, it's like, you know, weird. I want to keep recording this, but my arm's getting tired. Isn't that wild? And notice they were in a straight row, an entire row of what looked like angelic beings in the daytime sky. And here's a modified version of the original video. Check this one out here in the center. The shape stayed the same. In fact, they all stayed the same. But this one right here had some sort of a unique vertical, what looks like a long rectangle or something in the middle of it. You can see 45 degree angles at the top and bottom of this darker feature in the center of what looks like an angelic being in the daytime sky. And there's a long row of these things. Every once in a while, we'll get photos or video of maybe one or two spotted in the daytime sky. This is an entire row that just appeared out of nowhere. They don't move during the entire length of the video. This is a modified version. Here's yet another modified version. You can get a little better look at these things that were hanging around in the daytime sky above Warren, Ohio just a few days ago isn't that cool and again every once in a while we'll get a stray photo or a video of what looks like maybe a an angelic being in the daytime sky it's open to interpretation but what we've got going on here is in an entirely different league not just Okay, so that was one fascinating thing. And I just popped up a comment that energy is interfering with the connection. Yeah, plus we're also in Mercury retrograde shadow period as well. And I saw someone else saying they'd seen, um, uh, Stella, I popped your comment up before, just saying you'd seen tons of blue orbs and things lately as well. Um, blue orbs, I tend to associate with blue soul group, which a few of you guys in the community, myself included, uh, blue soul group, which is really, we see these around people that are here to help with like the ascension energy and really anchoring this kind of frequency here on earth as well. So I also have another little video to uh, show you. Now, this one is really exciting. This is one of my favorites that I first saw. Gosh, it must have been over, it was around 10 years ago, almost, yeah, nine or 10 years ago. So with this one, this one I'm about to show you, let me just bring this up, is two orbs that were captured, and they were captured over in the UK. And with this, I first became aware of this um, from Patty Greer, who, not related to Stephen Greer, so she has filmed orbs and documentaries and different things, um, but what she was saying was that some of these uh, orbs are actually communicating, so what you'll see in this video is two orbs flying together, creating a crop circle, but what she actually received a download on when she was putting the documentary together, and um, I think it's available possibly on Amazon or other different things, so go check out Patty Greer's information on orbs and crop circles, things of that sort of nature, if you're interested in this topic. Um, but what she said was something told her to, was on a VHS, I think, to slow the video image down to as slow as she could do. And what she noticed was a binary code pop up between the two orbs communicating. And she actually had it translated. And what the orbs were saying were, you make this part of the crop circle and I'll make this part. So keep that in mind as we're watching this video, that there is a high intelligence operating and driving behind this. The other thing too that she said that was fascinating was that um, some of them are not ET, that what they've discovered is some of these orbs actually work in unison with mother nature. So if we look into like nature spirits, elementals, things like that, that we get around myself and around this area, that's also what we see is it's to do with the veil being very thin. So we do know that some of these UK spots are on ley lines or in, I think, China, they call them dragon lines. Um, they're known as various different uh, topics in um, or various different names in other countries. So I'll play this one for you guys. But yeah, it does seem to me that Mother Earth is actually instructing these orbs to send a message to humanity which is why we see free um, energy technology and things of that sort of nature also come up as blueprints in some of these. And some people have asked for um, things to appear in crop circles, and they have. My friend Michael Lee Hill is one of those amazing people that's asked for that to happen. From this height, Oliver's Castle, one of the most often debated observations was made early one morning in 1996. A young man who had spent the night here and had brought a video camera with him was woken during early dawn by a humming sound.
Here I'm standing at Oliver's Castle at precisely the same spot as John Whaley was standing in August 1996, when he supposedly, for the first time in history, managed to film the creation of a crop circle. That the crop circle was not here on the previous day, but had appeared on the following morning, was a fact. That John Whaley was here at dawn could be confirmed by a military patrol that happened to be jogging by at the time. John went to the local pub later that same day and showed his film to the people there. Even so, many believe that he had managed to manipulate the film with computer animation in the meantime, something that computer animation experts doubt. To overlay a perfect animation over a handheld, unstable film would need several days of work using the computer equipment of that time. Even today, the film is still a great mystery, and John has gone underground due to the intense interest that his film created. So yeah, how exciting is that? It's so cool. It's like we have all of these little bits of information and that's part of what I love to do is try and connect the dots. And a big part of my mission here as well is not just understanding it, but I also feel that I've been put here to kind of be a conduit between worlds. So to bring communication and things through connected to do with these beings. So I saw someone as well saying uh, before that it'd be great to know the intention as well. So we will look into the intention of why these beings are here. Although there is a multitude of different types, just like there's a multitude of different species here on earth as well. So let me just pop up. I have another video to share with you guys as well. And then we'll start to look into some other things. But yeah, how cool is it to see on video? I just see Jake commenting. And yeah, I can see a few of you talking about um, uh, Tartaria and things of this sort of nature as well, where they would actually capture, you know, plasma from, um, I don't know if you call it the ionosphere, but we see that they capture, you know, energy and things. So I think there's so much to learn about this that's connected with free energy as well. And we see that in a little bit in electroculture gardening. Now, this one is a little bit of a different topic, but you are about to see plasma UFOs. So this one, let me just pop this up. So this was the Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 that disappeared. So this um, was on March the 8th, 2014. And I remember looking into this subject at the time as well. So my vision of when I um, psychically remote viewed and looked into the situation, I saw the plane get blinked out and pulled into what I could only describe as like a portal or it literally got taken into another dimension was the vision that I was shown back in the time. So you can imagine, I think it was maybe the start of this year or last year when I saw this video footage that supposedly came from, I think it was Russian satellites, um, had the view of these balls of light, these plasma flying around the plane and then building up what seems to be kind of a charge and then it blinks out. So there was meant to be some kind of distress that the plane was in. So whether these beings actually helped it, um, in my vision, and I guess we don't know yet how, <laughs> how this ended, um, or we haven't, yeah, been shown how it's ended. Maybe some people know how it's ended. The vision I saw, though, um, I did see sort of, uh, I'm trying to like get back into the vision to describe it to you guys, but I did see, remember that show Thunderbirds um, back from when some of us were kids? Uh, I saw sort of like what seemed to be some kind of a base, and I saw there was, it seemed to be like, I don't know if it was like jungle or some kind of nature and things like that, but I saw that the plane was, it looked like it was on the ground, but it, it seemed to be in like another timeline or some other kind of environment. So yeah, really interesting, but I did see it get shot out into a portal or zapped into a portal. So you guys will see this here. It lies in the coordinates briefly visible in the satellite video footage. Redditors quickly determined that a U.S. spy satellite named NROL-22 captured the event based on partial name markings. Launched in 2006, NROL-22 was a classified satellite on a unique Molniya orbit. Reddit user, you slash Droogie don't crash here, 
conducted an extensive analysis plotting the location of surveillance satellite NRL-22 relative to the coordinates displayed in the video. They determined that at its point of closest approach, NRL-22 passed within 4,434 kilometers of the coordinates in the southern Indian Ocean. With the satellite reaching a peak altitude of 83 degree, its elevation above the coordinates was approximately 4,401 kilometers. This positions NROL-22 tantalizingly close to the location depicted in the satellite footage during the projected time period of MH370's disappearance. Another critical revelation uncovered by Reddit users is that the original satellite footage exhibits a stereoscopic 3D effect. This indicates the video was captured using two separate camera lenses spaced apart, allowing for parallax and depth perception. User something something be demonstrated that when viewing the video by crossing your eyes, a perceptible 3D depth becomes apparent in elements like the clouds and orb flash. They also provided split-screen footage showing the stereo effect directly. This stereoscopic capability matches known sensors equipped on advanced reconnaissance satellites like the classified NRL-22, suspected of capturing the event. Going back to the FLIR thermal video, it depicts an unconventional camera angle that initially raised doubts about its credibility. Some claimed the view could not be achieved from standard nose-mounted optics. However, users identified the drone as a General Atomics MQ-1C Grey Eagle based on its wing shape and expanded surveillance payload. The MQ-1C can accommodate multiple electro- So it is up online. Um, so it was the airliner vanishing, analyzing the chilling footage of the internet. Uh, was what it was headed under, and I'll just bring that back up. So it was under the Relic uh, YouTube channel. So there's quite a few people that have put out, uh, you know, videos on this topic and things. Let me just bring up what we're talking about next. So, yeah, if we if we also talk about, let me just go in and find some of these videos first. I'm actually going to bring this up in the order that I've got it in, just in case we have any technical glitches and things. Okay, so what you guys are going to see here is, this is some of my, um, yeah, <laughs> look what Tim said as well, they are living in the Lost series, perhaps, um, but yeah, interesting, we don't know, but it did seem to me that they were taken to a different place, um, and when you look to interesting flights and things like that that happen, it's always interesting to take a look at, um, you know, if there's certain people on there, different teams. And I think with this one, it might have been this one or another plane from memory, it was, um, you know, a team of people um, that were working on a certain project as well. So with this one, this was a photo. And if you look closer in, and I will get a bit closer in another uh, one of the photos, but you'll see here, this was just, I was in a car passenger and I took a photo because I'm like oh my gosh this place is so stunning and so beautiful the energy of it really spoke to my heart and soul and I took a photo not actually seeing the UFO shape in the cloud with the orb plasma ball or um, UFO underneath so we'll get a little bit closer in some of these and you can see here like it was just stunning I would actually love, love to go back there and see and you know take more photos be around this energy interact with it and let me just click on some more so here is a close-up so for those of you that have um good eyes you'll be able to make out there's like a disc type shape in the clouds underneath there's a plasma ball that seems to be sitting over the top of the mountain or the water so we know when we look into ufos and ufo sightings or perhaps even the plasma energy side of it there tends to be whether it's minerals or electricity or, um, you know, other elements that are really active in these sorts of places. So sometimes there's portal energy, sometimes there's hot springs, ley lines, um, you know, different uh, energy vortex points, like in Sedona and things too, we see, you know, these kind of unidentified uh, objects. And with this, you can actually see sometimes when I've seen some discs, these orbs will actually come out. So I do believe this orb possibly was actually in this cloaked cloud ship or disc. I did sense a lot of Pleiadian energy um, looking back on the photos and looking at it at the time too. So 
You can also see in this same series of photos, just above the clouds is this plasma ship. So this one is more of a triangular uh, type ship. And I did have someone that was ex UK Air Force have a look at my photos and footage and said that it wasn't created as an artifact of the camera. It did in fact have its own light source. So yeah, really, really interesting. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, and there is a close up of it too. So yeah, interesting that, you know, with plasma ships, because we know that it's a different state of matter. So when we look to, you know, why people say, oh, well, how come we don't see, you know, things all the time? Because not everything is nuts and bolts. Not everything is like metallic type objects. The ones that we do see that are metallic are amazing. And some of them are back engineered and some of them are from, you know, from earth as well. Oh, and I can see Sean is saying, um, so you live near Yosemite and tons of granite there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I would love to go back. You'll have to let me know if you've captured any amazing photos and things like that. Um, so let's have a look into the next topic. And this is one of the plasma UFOs that I've filmed. I won't push the sound, but you will see here. And I'm not going to expand it because it will take us off this little reel that I've put together. But you can see a plasma ball of light. So I have shown this one before. But what I actually saw was inside of this plasma ball of light, you could see a being seated there. So if we talk about generating or activating our own Merkaba field or Merkaba energy, it's likely that we could get to this potential. So even when we look to like a lot of the Vedic beings and Vedic culture, some of these have incredible plasma fields. So when I've seen uh, some of them appear to me, it's almost like they're living more in, yeah, I guess we would say like 4D, 5D or higher. The energy feels more real than real. Um, it actually kind of makes this 3D world feel a little bit false or a little bit fake. So yeah. Um, yeah, I do get the feeling as well that perhaps some of the passengers were saved. Thank you, Vicky. Have a beautiful dinner. So let's have a look at some of my other things that we have. And this was just another photo of a plasma ship that um, Japanese TV picked up. So I was lucky to go to Italy to film for Japanese TV. Um, but yeah, you can see here they've just circled. So they're quite intrigued by it. I also wanted to make sure to cover the topic of uh, talking about the sun because we know the sun is plasma. There is plasma beings that live on the sun as well. Oh, I thank you. That's that's really lovely. Um, so yeah, with, with the plasma beings that are on the sun, NASA actually originally years and years ago had a photo up and it was two angels that were in the face of the sun. So you could see their faces, their eyes, their ears, their mouth, their nose, hair, wings. Um, I can't find that photo. It looks like it's been scrubbed from the internet. If anyone does have, um, you know, one of the originals of it, I would love for you to send it to me. Uh, but yeah, what we see here too is this photo, I remember doing this beautiful conference for Watchers Talk, and I was actually beforehand, I'm seeing if I'm right here, for those of you that have seen me on other things as well, and other shows talking for years, I actually took this alchemical elixir of the Anunnaki, which my beautiful friend sent over from America, and with this, it's like starfire gold is the um, starfire gold powder is the name of what they call the powder. It's also known as white powder gold. So this was found in some of the Egyptian um, tombs and things like that. So what they found was that the Egyptians were into taking white powder gold. So what I noticed when I take white powder gold, um, yeah, so this is right. So what Tim is saying as well, that Jay uh, Wilder says that the biggest objects filmed in outer space are plasma uh, filaments. So this is some of what NASA is also discovering, like further up. Um, yeah, so with this, with the photos that I'm sharing here, I actually took some of this white powder gold, like the Egyptians and the Anunnaki would also take. And I consciously went and meditated in the sun before during this conference and the show and even though i was sort of sitting more in like a shaded area yeah, in inside the house the sun was actually picking up on some of the energies going on within the aura so you can see here just between like near my hands my hands is sort of morphing a little because it's almost like being between two different states um and you can see in some of these pics like 
more kind of like shapes and things. And we see this sometimes where there's photographs in the sun and you'll get not just um, lens flare, but in some of them in particular, you'll pick up on orbs or shapes that are not in alignment with like lens flare and, and, and camera artifacts. So we can see here just the intensifying of this kind of energy. And let me see what else. So here is the one where you can actually kind of see this plasma-like energy or this bowl right near my hands. And you can see my hands are sort of like morphing, the energy field's getting more intense. So with this, I wasn't trying to project anything. I was literally in my passion, in my love of talking about, I'm trying to remember what I talked about. It might it may have been talking about food and our connection with how to increase your light body. Um, it may have been a topic where I was talking about um, how to build a psychic brain. I'm trying to remember back to what I actually talked about about in this one because there's been so many shows so oh thank you um so with this you can also see it just keeps sort of like morphing and changing a little but um it really it felt amazing to sit within this and to have this experience and yeah some of these were sent by um i had some sent by a friend and some sent by uh, Omar, who was hosting as well, which was amazing. So here we're stepping into the importance of building our own plasma, our chi, our life force energy. Uh, thank you. Um, so with this, so yeah, definitely like with the gold, it is more to take orally. Um, and I'm just looking, that's such a sweet comment. Thank you, Stella. But yeah, definitely like charge up. If it is something that you're going to investigate or research in, it's almost like you can gather the energy from the sun and yeah, you feel it like within the life force. So what we have here is um, you find these pics online as well. So these ones, I can see it's from old posters, which is where I found it. But you can see here the life force energy of the apple. Um, so this is what we were talking before right at the start to do with um, electroplate photography and things where they're able to put a charge, put the, the device or you know, like put a pen on there, put your hand on there, put an apple and things on there. But what I love about this series of photos and David Avocado Wolf also talks about this too, to do with like, you know, food, energy, energy absorption from food, life force energy. So we see here as well. Um, so these were Korean photography shots to do with organically grown living lentil sprouts. So the one on the left, uh, living organic grown lentil sprout. And on the right, we see a health food store uh, package one. So shown on the right, the living um, organic lentil sprout blanched at 140 degrees Fahrenheit for around two to three minutes. So which food has more energy, which has more living nutritional benefits? So it's interesting because we're kind of electrical plasma-like beings as well. So you can see there's definitely more of a concentration around that one on the left, um, whereas you can see the energy dissipate with the one that is cooked and heated and take into account it's only two to three minutes. So microwaving food will actually zap the energy. So we can see here as well, unzap the nutrient level. So I don't recommend using a, a microwave, but we can see here the cooked cabbage versus the live cabbage. Like which would you rather eat? Which would you rather consume? So the more that we build our life force energy and our tea, and the more that we're conscious of consuming these sorts of foods, the more that we do have orbs and other things like to also interact with us um, or can recognize and identify this energy. So insects are also said to see in um, UV or ultraviolet. So they can also pick up on, um, you know, things that we can't possibly see. So we see here a slice of meat versus an apple. Very, very different in terms of, you know, absorption of energy and things. What we also see is the energy seems to sit sometimes like tighter in, closer to things that are cooked. It's like the energy doesn't dissipate or let go. Um, so we see here an organic kiwi versus a commercial kiwi as well. So let me just, oh, this is some of, so this is some of my food. So eating things like this that are like a lot of a raw component, superfood component or nutritionally dense does help to get that energy, that life force into your um, cells, into your body, creating um, also healthy, good gut bacteria too is really good for holding more uh, life force. So yeah, I just want to provide you guys with some inspiration and examples. This is one of my favorite smoothie bowls that I've made. It's delicious. 
and let me just see you can also do things like this was a hibiscus tea and even though we are heating it you can make sun tea where you put it with your um with your water making sure you have good quality water um but you can put like your tea bag so this one was a lemongrass hibiscus one so even like you know having lots of color will also help increase like your energy uh your energy your frequency and help to build what we call like more of a rainbow light body so you see this beautiful artwork here depicting buddha activating this rainbow light body and yeah it's just you know when we look at the spiritual energy that comes off of this there's definitely a link so the reason i'm talking about it in the body too is because when we look into the blood cells it's about, I think, 40, 50% of the blood cell is actually plasma. So this is where we get some of the anti-aging benefits from. So we see this in facials where they take your blood out, spin it in a centrifugal device, take the plasma, reintroduce it back into the cellular um, uh, mantle of the skin. And it does help to, you know, provide like more plumping and regrow of collagen and elastin and things in the skin. Um, but yeah, when we also look into the body and into the plasma waters within the body as well, um, what we also see is, oh, I'm just having a look at this comment. Where is it? Just disappeared for a second. So Kaka de hibiscus tea was drunk in Egypt. Yeah, so, and it's interesting because Ka in Egypt is also one of like the light bodies or spirit body. It's like what we're said to travel in, like the astral realm and things like that. So huge benefits to drinking hibiscus tea. Um, so yeah, um, what we also see with uh, looking into the physical body and the plasma is it starts when we look into the cerebrospinal fluid, comes from part of the brain called the choroidal plexus, which is in the center. This separates the blood and we still have some of the plasma charge go into the water. So if we're looking at activating this beautiful light body energy, we can activate the Kundalini, we can activate the plasma energy within our biofield, within these chakras, within our heart electromagnetic center, which is covered and surrounded by pericardium, which um, is a fluid filled sac. And when I did another show on water, we really went into the gematria of the pericardium. So it's kind of like a portal like our soul seat or soul kind of like gateway, really such an important part of who we are. But that is for another show because there's so much information on this. Um, we see here as well, I've drawn someone's aura that had like a huge plasma charge around them. So what's been fascinating to me is I have been seeing a lot more energy start to activate within people at the moment. So what I've seen is probably... It's been such a limited amount in terms of the thousands and thousands of readings that I've done. But what I am seeing is there's a change in energy dynamics that's happening within a couple of people. And I, I am noticing as well certain things. So sometimes there will be um, things like I saw someone using the EAS frequency frequency device, um, a pendant that had been charged in that, and they had a plasma energy within the body. I also saw another beautiful client that had taped um, magnets to their face, and this had activated plasma within the aura. So when I see a plasma aura, I try and find the commonalities and links so that I can share this information with the public and with my clients and let them know like what they're doing really makes the difference. So with um, with some other people that have had more of a plasma charge, which we know is life force energy. So some have practiced Qigong, Tai Chi, uh, Reiki, Pranic Healing, all of these things in a help to increase our life force and things as well. So there's a lot of comments in here. I really appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you for that. Um, what we also see too is with this, this picture was drawn over 10 years ago by myself. So as a child, I've always had um, different things, you know, pop in and out of reality. And because my visual spectrum is quite expanded, like I'm not just living within like the normal kind of human spectrum, I do see just a little bit outside, which um, is also information for another show into the visual spectrum and what we pick up on. But these beings appear as kind of an illuminated 
it's almost like a spun silk or kind of like a cobweb type energy when we see these beautiful beings. So to me, they look kind of etheric, but I do wonder if there's like a plasma charge that illuminates or comes from around their heart chakra, the third eye. These are ancient Syrians. There's also ancient Pleiadians that have this similar kind of vibe and beautiful energy as well. Um, but yeah, they just have the most exquisite heart-based like care and love for wanting humanity to progress and it's a big part of why I'm sharing this information so um important to mention also we talk about discernment and making sure that you know when we are seeing or interacting or feeling different beings also come in um that it's important that we ask if they love us unconditionally or if they're here for our best and highest good shamanically i always ask three times because there's a universal law that they can't lie if asked three times so i make sure to mention that on lots of shows because you know to protect you guys is also like my highest desire um so yeah with these beautiful beings the message and information that was downloading was surrounding me in love letting me know that you know we're not alone here um Oh yeah, and uh, thank you, Tim, for the reminder. Please hit that like for Plasma. Please share it with, even if you can just share it with one friend, we really greatly appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it is amazing to be able to interact with these beings. I think part of my greatest joy too has been, you know, interacting with these beings since a young age, but also being able to share this with you now. So with, um, you know, the orbs and things that interact on the shows that come in with the energy and you know, you guys really helping me to put together like this little dossier of photos and files from things that you guys send me that you see around. Um, so this was just a beautiful photo where we can sort of see that energy coming off um, the sun. I know a lot of people talk about lens flare and different things like that, but it is really interesting. Some people have actually taken photos and you'll see ET faces and things. Um, and on various other shows, you guys would have seen things like this. So on one of my shows here, we can see there's a ribbon orb with Carla's beautiful, um, I think that's the hexagonal pyramid, that one. Um, it's one of my favorites that she made me. And yeah, we see the ribbon orb here as well. So they do tend to hang around and like energy. So whether it's, you know, like working with crystals and, and things of this, but a lot of it is also intention. So a lot of the time I'm not setting for things to to come come in you know in this kind of way they just tend to be around and appear so what I'm trying to communicate to you guys too is that they're around you guys so um yeah I would love to see if you guys have any photos or anything that you want to share that's really interesting in terms of plasma and things like that I do find them easier to receive on social media um but I'm just making sure that we're talking covering everything um but yeah, I do recommend to go check out the plasma and the crop circle documentaries that Patty Greer has. I met her in person and she's in a beautiful, amazing divine feminine that's really helping to, you know, expose a lot more information with this. We also know that there is, um, oh, I thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. Um, so let's have a look as well. And I'm just going to bring back up my big screen so that we can have a look at these cards. All right. So let's have a look into what is it that was capturing my interest so much with wanting to share this topic? What is it that the plasma beings that are connected to the good side of things that love us unconditionally are wanting us to know or wanting to communicate? exciting I can feel suspense in the air okay let's have a look and you guys know as well that the way that I like to read is um, face down so you know I always like to feel into them we'll talk about what spirit is showing as well and then I will flip them over so the energy frequency I'm just going to move this little alchemical gold out the way I can feel that frequency really high charge so what I'm actually getting, I actually feel like I'm getting taken up into like a different atmosphere and I'm seeing what I can only describe as like, it looks, if you guys know the crystal, um, the aqua or the aura crystals. So this would be the white with the opalescent colors and the gold that comes off of that. They're showing me a frequency that's very similar to an aura crystal. I have an aqua aura, but I don't have the white ones yet. 
think that might now be next on my shopping list. Um, but what they're showing me with this is the plasma beings are trying to help increase or take us up into this light body type state or this higher dimensional density. Um, so it's much more of a finer vibration. What they're also showing me is it's helping us to almost be like scooped up so that a lot of the debris can be also taken out um, of the collective consciousness. So there is plasma beings that are waiting for us to connect and to be able to share conscious experience, downloads, messages. So just as we showed those beautiful ancient Syrians before, um, yeah, I do feel that there is messages and healing as well. So really, really interesting. Remember, please only connect to those that love you unconditionally and I'll just see what else is coming up. So yeah, with this, I do just keep feeling this beautiful higher dimensional density and things, but I also feel it's like, you know how we have like a parent wanting to sort of scoop us up and take us out of danger, out of trouble. I do feel that they're wanting to kind of surround or protect or encode us in some kind of protective frequency. What I also feel that their increased communication is around us now is to do with like having this higher dimensional version of earth. So fourth, fifth and higher. I actually feel that they're getting us acclimated and acclimatized to more kind of like living in this higher vibrational density and reality. Um, so let's flip the cards over. And this is beautiful. Okay. So we're seeing that they definitely want to take us on a journey and an adventure. We have Knight of Swords. So this is definitely, you know, asking, speaking, um, meditating, and, you know, expressing that desire to connect with these beautiful plasma beings that have our best and highest good at heart. Um, what I also then got was the card of success, which looks kind of like a plasma field too. So we see here as well, this looks like a portal. So you know, interesting, we're talking about literally asking to connect to these higher realms, these higher worlds. This to me is also when I see the rose, especially with the cross, to me, this more represents that Mary Magdalene higher kind of like ascended frequency and energy or Christos or Christ consciousness energy. Um, we then have the card of adjustment, which is also known as the justice card but with this card this also for me over the last like four years of the craziness that we've been going through represents where we're lifting the veil and we're ushering people from third into fourth and fifth dimension and higher so these cards are literally speaking about the exact vision there was no mistake and you know like the vision that they were trying to download to me this is why i love to read them upside down for you guys as well because you know for me i never used to read with the cards uh, you always used to just receive the vision, you know, communicate it, but it's for our human mind that we have and work with the cards. So we then see taking us into this higher frequency or octave. So nine of uh, disc. I heard spirit say nine of spheres just then, um, but it's Venus and Virgo energy. So very pure intent. Um, it does feel like they're helping, assisting us on this journey. So we see the full card. So they're with us along the way. We're not alone. Um, plasma is also said to be like fully around us all the time too. So yeah, amazing message. Let's have a look and see if there's anything else that they want to communicate to us around why we're looking into them today. And I just noticed as I picked these up, there was some kind of an unconscious flip to have a look at the bottom and it's the energy of the sun. So the energy of the sun is also helping us, um, you know, it's helping to activate us. And it's interesting if we look at it more from kind of like um, some of what the beautiful elders have taught me over here in Australia. One of them told me that the sun is more feminine because it helps to give life to things on earth, whereas the moon is more, more kind of like masculine and, you know, tempering, I guess, like the female cycle or kind of like working around things. Interesting perspective, but I do see how the sun is life-giving. When we also look into the energy of the sun too, plants absorb chlorophyll. Um, or they, they have chlorophyll, which is almost, I think it's like 99 point something bioidentical to the hemoglobin within our blood. The only difference being that it has magnesium. So there is a lot of liquid light and liquid plasma that we can consume, getting them from grains in particular. So just interesting to note for those of you wanting to increase your energy density and charge. But let's have a look into what else spirit is wanting to show us around what these beautiful plasma beings are wanting to communicate. 
So remembering not all beings are created equal or alike. So we are talking about the positive ones that have heartfelt intentions to help humanity. And we have a few more cards. Oh, I can see cockatoos in the background joining us. So what we see is Ten of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune. A Princess of Cups, the full card again, Two of Discs and the Ten of Wands. This is really, this is incredible energy. So they're really wanting us to have that utopia life. Um, this is what I call wishes fulfilled, happy families. It's really kind of getting to like the higher state of what it is that we want to bring about here on earth as well with the utopia energy. Um, and yeah, it's gorgeous. Look at this interaction, almost like a plasma-like energy to the sky. We see humanity being at one with nature as above, so below as well. Um, the next thing that we see is the Wheel of Fortune card. So for me, this is about kind of like getting into a into higher alignment with this energy and frequency. Um, oh, so yeah, the deck of cards that I'm using, this is the Star Tarot and the other one is the Thoth deck. So we then see the Princess of Cups. So the Princess of Cups for me channels, connects with higher frequencies, channels it down through her heart as well. Um, the next one we see is the Full card again, which for me also as a divine feminine energy represents Alice in Wonderland. So it's literally going down the rabbit hole. This also is um, one of the signs as of last year, Spirit's been giving me as a gold pilling card. So a lot of what we're also talking about with these cards is for you guys to kind of go forth and to be little representatives or little gold pills. So what it means by when Spirit talks about gold pilling, it's a little bit different to the red pilling situation uh, where we had to, you know, try and share the information to wake people up and kind of, um, yeah, activate people into, you know, this higher state of awareness. Gold pilling is where we literally, it's the light that we exude. It's the, what is it that you're doing? You know, what is it that you're eating kind of energy? Um, and we're seeing here as well, they're literally trying to help shift us into a higher state and frequency. What we do also see is the 10 of wands energy, just saying that we've been greatly oppressed. Um, this is the card of oppression. It is Sagittarius and uh, I'm just getting the vision, Sagittarius and Saturn energy. So with this, it is a lot to do with control, with systems, things like that. We've been forced to kind of carry so much on our backs as well. So with this, they're really helping us to kind of overcome the oppression and the programming. And I keep getting a vision of Tartaria with this. So whether they knew more about kind of like the true nature of reality back in those Tartarian days or how to kind of harness and influence um, and, and work with the energies more. The other thing too that we also see back in the Tartaria days is they did have those plasma devices, similar to the ectoplasm photos that we shared earlier. In the plasma-like devices, we also see in the old Tartaria photos is they could literally get a vision or an image for people to communicate with loved ones that have passed. So there was that ability to kind of tap in interdimensionally. So anyway, this is really interesting going forth. Um, perhaps we might revisit the topic of plasma beings in the future and have a look into if there's anything else that they want to communicate um, to us. Because I really do feel like how we have dolphins and whales and things wanting to connect or wanting to, um, you know, share different information and things with us. There is also, um, yeah, there's a reason for it. And, you know, when we look at like brothers, sisterhood type energy and connecting, um, maybe plasma is just one of those more kind of not so visible spectrums. So I do want to remind you guys to please like, share and subscribe. Please also register now for the full moon eclipse activation which is happening on the 25th this will be an event not to be missed and it's going to be <clears throat> a great one going forth really to kind of get us set up for this eclipse energy that we will be having on the 8th of april oh and i just appreciate your comments so much i really love being able to um to share this information with you guys so thank you so much for um you know for following and for being here with me today i just appreciate all of the love and i know um sophie and uh, julie and elena also as well uh so yeah please use the um, Equinox code to receive 20% off with a booking with me, whether it's for Starseed or whether it's for the Mystic um, 
uh, Oracle reading as well. Um, I would love to help you guys and also meet you somewhat in person. And it's been beautiful for everyone that I've read for so far. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please like, let me know if you've had plasma experiences in the comments below. I would love to hear like on what, what you guys have gone through too. I can hear my cockatoos calling in the background. All right. So you guys have a beautiful night. I love you all very much and I'll see you next week for an exciting show on USOs, which are submerged UFOs. So that is going to be really interesting diving into underwater worlds as well. So please join me with that one. And yeah, I love you guys. Bye.